Marco Pierre White, welcome to 7.30. It's a pleasure to be on 7.30. You were the pioneer, the original, the origin story for celebrity chefs. Do you still like the concept of the celebrity chef? Well, when I was a boy, I became known for what I put on the plate, for being behind my stove. If you look at a lot of celebrity chefs today, they don't cook, they don't have mission stars, they don't have awards. They're there for their personality. So there's two different breeds. You've got chefs who are in the, in the limelight because of their talents and their abilities, and then you've got chefs who are there for their personalities. So there's two types of us. Now, you had a reputation um, in the early days as a kitchen tyro, and it's become a commonplace of stories about kitchens, in fact, that that's how chefs have to be. What is it about the kitchen for people who've never worked in a professional kitchen that creates that great intensity of feeling and sometimes tempers that let rip? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I wouldn't use the word tempers. I mean, to raise your voice is one thing. When you're doing a service in the old days, you didn't say, Sarah, when you've got a moment, can I have those two beef for table five? And Brian, can we have some veg on the side? But in your own time, there's no rush. It's not like that. A chef raises his voice, and metaphorically speaking, pushes his team to deliver food so it's hot. Where the world has changed now, that majority of restaurants are set menus. Today, if you look at these two and three star Michelins, they're producing a 10 course dinner, which is little canopies on a plate. And the emphasis is put, put into the actual presentation. And let's not forget, they're very technical. But does technical mean delicious? You know something? Deliciousness for me comes from the heart. Well, tell me just a few simple questions about yourself. Do you cook for yourself when you're alone? Yes, I do actually, I like cooking. It's a wonderful pastime. And is there any ready-made food in your cupboard? Well, let's be brutally honest, is when you say ready-made, what do you mean by ready-made? Like, well, like noodles, which you pour boiling water into? Something, something maybe, something actually something cooked, like no. ready-made ravioli, for example. No, 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 I like simple, and I think the less you do to food, the more you show food off. I think if you tend to overwork food and do too much to food, you take away the beauty of food. And so I think keep it simple. You buy the most delicious piece of fish and you cook it to perfection. Just with a little dribble of olive oil, a little lemon juice, a little crystal salt, what more do you want? What is your favorite simple dish? There's lots of them. I like caviar, I like lobster, I like Dublin Bay prawns, I like grilled over sole. I like lots of things. Since when was a lobster simple? Well, I had lobster, I had lobster on the weekend. It's as simple as it is. I mean, you take your lobster from the sea and you cook it, you cook it in your corbouillon, yes? For X amount of minutes, depending on the size of it, and just let it rest and relax. That's simple. Then chop it, cut it in half, clean it out, and then make some mayonnaise. What's complicated about that? As I said, the more you do to food, the more you take away from food. So keep food simple. As I've always said, Mother Nature is the true artist. You've raised the interesting question of animals. Now, you famously went through a vegan period, I think, uh, in, in, in homage Nine to Nine months. Your... And then I was reborn a carnivore. So tell me about that. Where are you up to now? Uh, uh, where, where did you come to at the end of that journey? What I want when I eat, whether it's fish, meat, vegetarian, is I want to feel fulfilled at the end of it. And being a vegan, I never felt fulfilled. It was interesting. It was an emotional journey. It was fascinating. But you know something, I did it for nine months and that was it. Do you think, however, though, uh, the future will be different in, in terms of the amount of meat people consume? Because you too eat less meat than you used to, don't you? Well, that's what's happening. You see that happening. I see it every day, every year. Is, for example, if I go back to the 70s and 80s, early 80s when I was a boy, in the kitchens, there were no vegetarians. And gradually over the last 30 years, I would say, last night we did 80 in the restaurant, I would say, 10 people out of that 80 were vegetarian or opted for a vegetarian dinner. So therefore, you gotta look at sort of 13%, 14%, 12%, 15% some nights. And so therefore, it's growing and it's gonna continue growing. A question about restaurants. Um, one of the, on the one hand, with cooking shows, TV cooking shows and celebrity chefs, 
it has democratised good food around the world. On the other hand, there is a sameness to restaurants around the world. Have we given away too much food culture? Let's break that question down into two or three. Is firstly, you talk about celebrity chefs. Whether they're great cooks or not, it's an irrelevance. What it does is it inspires people to cook at home. It inspires people to buy better produce. And, and by doing that, by cooking and buying better produce, and your family sitting around the table, it enriches people's lives. So you have to look at the positive once again, not the negative. If you go into the cities and towns in Britain, you will see that there's chain restaurants all over. The menus are written by accountants. They specialise in portion control. The world has changed. It's as simple as that, and it will continue to change. Last question. As a young man, you left home, you left Leeds with a few quid in your pocket to train in one of the great British restaurants. You clearly had fire in your belly. Where is that fire taking you now? Well, I wouldn't say it was fire. I'd say I was fueled by my insecurities and by my fear of being sacked, my fear of failure that fear of having to go home and tell my father that I'd failed. And today, I'm still ruled by the same insecurities I had all those years ago. I've just learned how to deal with them, live with them and suppress them. And the insecurities we have at 10, we have at 20, we have at 30, we have at 40, we have at 50, we have at 60, they never leave us. At best, we teach ourselves how to suppress them and learn to live with them and teach ourselves to enjoy them and use that as fuel to assist us in creating and making and making it a better place in the world. I expected this to be a fascinating conversation about food and you've taken it to much higher places. Marco Pierre White, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. You, you took it to much higher places by the questions you asked. And as I always say, a good journalist always does their homework and asks the right question.